Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at oxidation and reduction, electron transfer, redox reactions, the reactions of metals with acids, an exam style question and finally a summary. So I'm going to begin with a reminder of what oxidation and reduction are. We discussed in our previous video how oxidation and reduction can be considered in different contexts. We explained how oxidation in terms of oxygen was the gain of oxygen and reduction was the loss of oxygen. Today we're going to be focusing on oxidation and reduction in terms of electrons. Oxidation we know is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons. And we discussed in our previous video how this can be summarised in the acronym OIL RIG, where oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. So now we've recapped oxidation and reduction, specifically in terms of electron transfer. Let's go ahead and have a look at what a redox reaction is. Well, a redox reaction is a reaction where both oxidation and reduction are occurring in the same reaction. Now you can see here we have two species. We have A and we have B. Now you can see that species A is losing these two electrons whereas species B is gaining two electrons. Now, as we know that oxidation is the loss of electrons, A is becoming oxidized, whereas B, which is gaining electrons, we know is becoming reduced. And in this reaction, electrons we can see are being transferred from A to B. One species, in this case A, loses X electrons, in this case two electrons, and the other species gains those electrons. So let's have a quick recap of oxidation numbers before we look at oxidation numbers within our redox reactions and how they change. We discussed how oxidation numbers is the charge the atom would have if it was composed of ions, and the oxidation number reflects the number of electrons that have been lost or gained. Looking at X, our example element, which has 10 electrons. When X is oxidized, we see an increase in the oxidation number. It has lost an electron and the oxidation number increases. When X is reduced, we see a decrease in the oxidation number. It has gained an electron and we see a decrease in the oxidation number. So let's have a look at some examples of redox reactions so we can look at how the oxidation numbers change. Well, the changes in oxidation numbers can reflect whether oxidation or reduction has occurred. Oxidation, which we know to be the loss of electrons, has an increase in oxidation number, whereas when reduction occurs, which we know is the gain of electrons, we see a decrease in the oxidation number. So the example we're going to look at is the reaction of nitrogen with hydrogen to form ammonia. So if we look at the oxidation numbers of the nitrogen and the hydrogen to begin with, nitrogen, which is an uncombined element on its own, we know will therefore have an oxidation number of zero. Our hydrogen, again, it's an uncombined element, will also have an oxidation number of zero. Now we have our ammonia. So we want to work out what the oxidation numbers of the nitrogen and the hydrogen are. Well, we know that hydrogen, when it's combined like this, takes an oxidation number of plus one. So now to work out the oxidation number of the nitrogen. So we have NH3, our ammonia. The rule we're using is that hydrogen as it's combined, has an oxidation number of plus one. The sum is equal to zero, as it's a compound, not an ion. So using X to represent the oxidation number of N, X plus three times one is equal to the sum, zero. So X plus three is equal to zero, meaning that X is equal to minus three, giving our nitrogen in the ammonia an oxidation state of minus three. Now we can see that the oxidation number of our nitrogen has decreased from zero to minus three, and that of our hydrogen has increased from zero to plus one. Now remembering that a decrease in oxidation number is a reduction, we can see that it's the nitrogen that has been reduced. Remembering that an increase in oxidation number is oxidation, we can see it's the hydrogen that has been oxidized. So let's have a look at a second example of redox reactions. This example is the reaction of metals with acids. Reactive metals can react with acids, as I'm sure you'll know. The metal is oxidized and the hydrogen is reduced to form hydrogen gas. Now, as oxidation and reduction are occurring in the same reaction, this is a redox reaction. 
So let's go ahead and have a look at this reaction here to see how it is a redox reaction. If we begin by having a look at the oxidation state of sodium, we begin with the sodium metal. It is an uncombined element and therefore has an oxidation state of zero. It forms sodium chloride. Now we know that when we have a simple ion, the oxidation state will be that of the charge on the simple ion, which we know in sodium's case is plus one. So it has a plus one oxidation state here. Now looking at hydrogen, we are producing hydrogen gas, which we know is an uncombined element. So that's an oxidation state of zero. Here we have combined hydrogen, which we know has an oxidation state of plus one from our rules. So now we look at how the oxidation states change. The metal sodium increases in its oxidation number. So that we know is an oxidation. Our hydrogen decreases from plus one to zero, and we know a decrease is reduction. Our oxidizing and reducing agents are incredibly important. In our reactions, we have oxidizing and reducing agents, and they have slightly different roles. Our oxidizing agents oxidize other things and are themselves reduced, whereas our reducing agents reduce other things and are themselves oxidized. Our disproportionation reactions are really interesting reactions. They are reactions where the same element is both oxidized and reduced. We can look at the changes in oxidation number to classify reactions as disproportionation reactions. The example we're going to look at is the decomposition of H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. In this example, the oxygen is being both oxidized and reduced. Let's first take a look at the oxidation of our oxygen. We can see that it's represented by the red arrow here. Initially, the oxidation number our oxygen takes in our hydrogen peroxide is minus one, and it ends with an oxidation number of zero. So we can see it is indeed being oxidized. The oxidation number is being increased. If we take a look at how it's being reduced, we can see that again, our oxygen starts with that oxidation state of minus one. And in the water molecule, it takes an oxidation state of minus two. The oxidation number is being reduced and therefore our oxygen is being reduced. And that way we can see how in this reaction, the same element, our oxygen, is being both oxidized, shown by the red arrow, and reduced, shown by the blue arrow, making this a disproportionation reaction. Which of the equations below represents a redox reaction? So we know that a redox reaction is one where both reduction and oxidation occur. So if we move to a separate slide to look at our options, and we can have a closer look at the oxidation numbers within them and how they change. So to begin with, if we look at option A, looking at the oxidation state of magnesium, we have elemental magnesium that has an oxidation state of zero. We then have magnesium sulfate. Now we know that the charge taken by the magnesium ion is usually a two plus charge. And when we have simple ions, the oxidation state is that of the charge that's taken by the ion. So magnesium here will have a oxidation state of plus two. If we now look at the oxidation state of our hydrogen, it begins as combined hydrogen, which we know has an oxidation state of plus one. It then forms hydrogen gas, that's uncombined, so we'll have an oxidation state of zero. So we can see magnesium increases in oxidation state from zero to plus two, and hydrogen decreases from plus one to zero. So the magnesium is becoming oxidized and the hydrogen reduced. We can see it's therefore indeed a redox reaction. We have oxidation and reduction occurring within the same reaction. Now it is important in multiple choice questions to have a check through the rest of the answers. We still have three more options which we need to eliminate. Although it seems that option A is our correct answer, it is important to ensure that you've had a look and eliminated the rest of the options. If we were to take a closer look at options B, C and D, we can see that none of these correctly represent redox reactions where both oxidation and reduction occur. And it is therefore option A that is our correct answer. If we move on to question two, 
in terms of electron transfer, what does the term oxidation mean? This is quite a simple question. It's a one mark definition question. Now, remembering our acronym, the oxidation is loss and reduction is gain of electrons. We know that the answer is that oxidation is the loss of electrons. That's a simple and easy definition, which is easy to remember with our little acronym. So let's take a look at our third exam question. When heated, zinc reacts with calcium carbonate, CaCO3, according to the reaction shown below. This reaction is a redox reaction. Which element has been oxidised and which has been reduced? So, we know that redox reactions are indeed reactions where both oxidation and reduction has occurred. We're given a reaction here, one that you might not be familiar with, and we're asked to select which element has been oxidised and which has been reduced. So we know that we can identify the element that's been oxidised and that that's been reduced by looking at the changes in the oxidation numbers. So if we begin by looking at our zinc. Initially, we have uncombined zinc, which has an oxidation state of zero. Now zinc is forming zinc oxide. Now, zinc oxide has the formula ZnO. The rule that we're using will be that oxygen, when combined, has an oxidation state of minus two, and our sum is zero, as the compound has no overall charge. So X representing the oxidation state of zinc plus minus two is equal to zero, meaning that X is equal to plus two. So zinc has an oxidation state of plus two. You can see we have an increase in the oxidation state, indicating the zinc has been oxidized. If we look then at our calcium, calcium starts as calcium carbonate. Now we know that when we have our simple ions, the oxidation state will be that taken by our simple ion, which in calcium's case we know to be plus two. In calcium oxide, we can see the calcium also has an oxidation state of plus two. You can see there's been no change in the oxidation state of calcium. Calcium has neither been oxidized nor reduced. So if we have a look then at our carbon, Carbon is incorporated into our calcium carbonate. So if we have a look, we have CaCO3. Breaking this down and using our rules, we can calculate the oxidation state of carbon. So let's look at the rules that we're using. The first rule is that the oxygen as it's combined has an oxidation state of minus two, and the calcium, which we know is our simple ion, will have an oxidation state of plus two. 2. The sum we know is going to be 0 as the calcium carbonate has no overall charge. So using x to represent the oxidation state of carbon, we have plus 2 is the oxidation state of calcium, plus x, plus 3 times minus 2 to account for all three oxygens is equal to 0. So that's x plus 2 minus 6 is equal to 0 meaning that x is equal to plus 4. So the carbon starts with an oxidation state of plus 4. If we have a look, the carbon then goes into form carbon monoxide. Now we know that when combined, oxygen takes an oxidation state of minus 2. So in our carbon monoxide, the rule is that the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2, and the sum is zero. So that's x, where x represents the oxidation state of carbon, plus minus two is equal to zero. And we can see x is therefore equal to plus two. So the oxidation state of our carbon changes from plus four to plus two. It is decreasing. And we can therefore see it is the carbon that is reduced. So we can see here that it is the zinc that has been oxidized and it is our carbon that has been reduced. So let's go ahead and take a look at question four together. One compound often found in rocket fuel is called hydrazine, N2H4. It is formed through a reaction between ammonia and NaClO, sodium hypochlorite. The reaction produces two byproducts, water and table salt. Part A, write an equation for this reaction. 
Now, although you might never have come across some of these chemicals before, you may never have seen hydrazine or sodium hypochlorite. That's not something that should worry you. If you read the question carefully, all the information we need is in the question. We know the reactants are ammonia and sodium hypochlorite, so let's go ahead and write that in. And we know we're forming hydrazine, water and table salt. So let's go ahead and write that in. So now we've written our equation, we just need to go ahead and balance it. We can see that in our reactants we have three atoms of hydrogen, however in our products we have six. So we can balance that by putting a two in front of our ammonia. And we can then see that we have the correct number of atoms on each side of our equation. So using the information we're given in the question, we formed a balanced equation for this reaction. One mark is given for the correct reaction and a second for correct balancing. In part B, we're asked to explain why this is a redox reaction, making reference to the oxidation numbers of the reactants and products. So we know that a redox reaction is one in which both reduction and oxidation take place. So if we have a look at some of the species in our reaction, let's start off by looking at the nitrogen. The nitrogen has an oxidation state of minus three. In our product, our nitrogen is in our hydrazine. We can see hydrazine has a formula of N2H4. With each of these hydrogens has an oxidation state of minus one. So minus one times four gets us minus four. As we have two nitrogens, each must have an oxidation state of minus two. So we can see that the nitrogen is changing its oxidation state from minus three to minus two. It's increasing and therefore it is being oxidized. We can see that the oxidation state of our sodium does not change, but if we look at our chlorine, Chlorine initially has an oxidation state of plus one in our sodium hypochlorite. And in our sodium chloride, our table salt, it has an oxidation state of minus one. We can see the oxidation state is being reduced. And therefore our chlorine species is being reduced. So as both oxidation and reduction is occurring, this reaction can be referred to as a redox reaction. The three marks given in this question are for identifying that it is the nitrogen that is being oxidized, showing the change in oxidation numbers. The same for our chlorine species. The third and final mark comes from explaining that both oxidation and reduction are occurring, and therefore this is a redox reaction. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.